Good morning. Now it's time for Toker Talk Radio, the voice of the marijuana nation. What are you people? On dope? Where you can tell. I am here. Uh, or you can talk. I experimented with marijuana and didn't inhale. Or you can talk and talk. Ten federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. While we talk about toke on Toker Talk Radio. So by the way, when it comes to pot, you know, if you're 40 years old, you live in a log cabin in Oregon, you got 12 giant pot plants in your backyard, have a ball. Live from beautiful Poplin, Oregon at Rolla J Studios. Cannabis. Plus your calls live at 971-533-7111. They're walking on their pants with their cap on backwards, listening to the end of a man, the Snoopy Snoopy Poop Dog. What's to keep somebody from getting all potted up on weed and then getting behind the wheel? Gateway theory doesn't work. It's a reality. Holland, is it real? Don't tease me. We're locking up people that take a couple of puffs of marijuana, and, and the, the next thing you know, they got 10 years. And now, here's your host, the guru of Gonza Graphics, the sultan of Sativa Statistics, and the worst nightmare of a reefer mad prohibitionist. A polite, perspicacious, productive pothead with a propensity for PowerPoint. Radical Russ Belleville. Some days you're the car, some days you're the frog. I'm feeling like the frog today. Feeling froggy. Feel like I got to jump. Welcome to Toker Talk Radio. Got uh, Brian the Red hanging out. Oh, I feel like the frog after he got hit by the car. <laughs> A little flattened? Yeah, just a wee bit. So if you just joined us, uh, we just went off on uh, Representative Bill Lant uh, from Missouri's 100, oh, 159th district. I was saying 157th. Shit. 159th district. Eh. Yeah, whatever. So uh, you got it, as long as you got his email right. Bill Lant. <laughs> Bill.lant at house.mo.gov. And, and this Mo. is the thing. First of all, I, I got to like when the representative sends back the line that says, I can assure you that sending me messages that impugn my character or honesty will get you nothing. He misspells impugn. Uh, I like that. That just tickles me as a, you know, a writer. Eh. But uh, get a job. And get off dope. And so there's a couple things. First of all, when, you, and this goes back to our interview too with, uh, with uh, Sheldon, right? Sheldon Norberg. Um, if, if you're still calling it dope, <laughs> then maybe your knowledge of marijuana yeah. isn't as up to date as it ought to be. <laughs> by God, they caught him with a lid of dope. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. 1971. Right, he probably doesn't call. know the term lid. <laughs> it's just amazing. Get a job and get off dope. And, this is one thing that, that bothers me is this from our opponents, obviously, is this um, this frame, this idea, this stereotype that we don't have jobs, that those of us who are fighting for legalization are emailing these guys about medical marijuana, that we don't have jobs. That's this. I mean, they I, I imagine Bill Lant probably sits back and thinks of us as just smoking weed in our basement. Not going to work, not answering an alarm clock. Wait a minute, th th that is me. <laughs> Wait a minute, but I trust me, I work. <laughs> I work quite a bit. But this idea that somehow those of us who are marijuana aficionados and people who wish to fight for legalization, and believe me, that's not always, that's a Venn diagram that's not completely overlapping. Yeah. There's plenty of people that don't smoke pot that are for legalization. Yeah, or, or even patients. You know, he was saying, you know, listing medical conditions and yeah. stuff, and the, you know, representative still comes back with dope dope get dope. a job and get off dope yeah get get a job you you lazy sick person did you did you not hear that the guy has vascular disease of some sort <laughs> i mean so yeah it's frustrating to me when i when i keep reading that from politicians and from you know the the pot haters out there and this 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 throwaway line of get a job and get off dope get a job get a job you loser do you know it's like i looked up the statistics on this and if you look at people that have ever smoked pot in their life and people who have never smoked pot in their life, uh -huh. the full and part-time employment statistics are greater for the people who have smoked pot. And even when you restrict those numbers and start saying, well, how about the people who are actually actively smoking pot? Still, 
greater numbers, greater per- percentages, I should say, I, greater rate of full and part-time employment. I was a top producing customer service associate for you know over five years uh, while consuming cannabis daily. Uh, you know, <laughs> plenty of us. But me, too. I was I was teaching high level visual basic programming to corporate six figure corporate professionals. I was teaching, you know, all the complex software and network analysis tools to other technical people and go home and smoke weed. Yeah, I was uh, helping children learn uh, math, reading, uh, logic, deduction, uh, strategy and other things by running a gaming store and uh, did that for seven years (laughs) while Th- three of those years, I was also working at <laughs> at the uh, the customer service gig, and four of those years, I was volunteering at three other locations. So don't tell me we're unproductive, you know, and that we need to get a job. You know, it, it'd be nice if we could get paid a little bit more, but well. we don't reach beyond our bounds because oh, we're still in a system where we can get fired for anything. There you go. Now this is the segue. Uh, that's going to lead us into our next segment. When we come back from break, I want to talk a little bit about this get a job and get off dope meme and how much the drug testing and how much the criminal threats of marijuana maintain a special kind of class system in this country that is going to fall apart the more we continue to legalize. Right now, we got to pay some bills. Break down them walls. So we'll be right back. Stick around. It's Toker Talk Radio. We'll also take your calls. The number's right above Brian's head at Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. When you are starting up a medical cannabis business, you don't just want any attorney. You want a fired-up lawyer who understands the needs of cannabis consumers. The Law Office of Lauren Vasquez is your fired-up lawyer for the cannabis industry. Lauren Vasquez knows the details of California marijuana law from both a personal and professional angle. Lauren Vasquez rose from the ranks of college normal activist to become one of the Bay Area's best marijuana lawyers. Visit her website, firedupmoyer.com, or call 1-855-MMJ-LAWS for more information. That's 855-665-5297 for Lauren Vasquez, your Fired Up Lawyer, or email firedupmoyer at gmail.com. The number again is 855-MMJ-LAWS, 855-665-5297 for your fired up lawyer, Lauren Vasquez. Lauren Vasquez is an activist attorney you can trust. Call today. 420 Radio, your ticket to Seattle Hemp Fest. Hey, tokers and tokets, Radical Russ here to introduce you to my friend Matt and all the staff at Lush LED Lighting. Growing plants indoors can be a rewarding hobby, but electricity bills can go through the roof. Then you have to cool down all those big hot lights. It can drive a grower insane. With Lush LED Lighting, you can solve many of these issues and double your rewards. If you thought LEDs were meet the tech of today, Matt and his scientists have developed the perfect light for flowering plants with far less cost and heat. And the results? Let's just say I appear at a lot of events with the masters of indoor horticulture, and the harvests I saw from Lush LED Lighting were big, tight, sticky, and very effective. Check out LushLEDLighting.com right now and tell them Radical Russ sent you. Double your rewards and lower your expenses with Lush LED Lighting. Be with me 
That's Bradley with So High. Welcome back. You're listening to Toker Talk Radio. And uh, like I said before the break, we're going to segue our way into talking about how this meme of our opponents, this stereotype, get a job and get off dope. Whenever somebody you know, writes into a small town Republican in the Midwest, I guess. Uh, and, and it just so happens, uh, Brian the Red uh, forwarded me this link. Uh, I mean, it just so happens I was perusing things and found this at random you know, yeah. when I was doing a search for something else. Thanks. But. Yes, this is a communication specialist, general profession four, only open to Colorado State residents. Pays forty seven hundred to sixty eight hundred dollars a month. A month. A month, folks. Uh, also offers job security, career advancement, four hundred one k, four fifty seven plans, defined contribution plans, state defined contribution plans, mental and dental health plans, paid life insurance, short and learning disability coverage, ten paid holidays per year, plus general pers- generous personal time off. Eco pass offered at reduced cost. Excellent work life programs such as flexible work schedules, training opportunities, and more. What's your gig? You would be. Developing and managing a comprehensive public information program to address public relations, information, and education priorities of the Department of Revenue to various audiences, including the retail marijuana industry, legislature, news media worldwide, and other state agencies and local government entities. Folks, if I were a Colorado resident, this is my job. (laughs) It it would be on like Donkey Kong. My resume fits this job perfectly. Here's the duties. Develop and implement a comprehensive and all-encompassing retail marijuana communications program, which includes marijuana enforcement and tax information education. Develop a variety of tailored trainings for specific audiences and utilize a variety of formats, including live, classroom one-on-one training to current technology, such as webinars, online, self-guided training, videos, and podcasts. Check, 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 and check. Schedule, compile, design, and write public information education materials and prepare the information to be available for statewide news media consumption and distribution. (coughs) Establish standards for editorial design content of the Retail Marijuana website and all information, (laughs) publications, and materials disseminated by the department regarding industry taxation and enforcement. (laughs) Serve as the department's primary spokesperson to outside media personnel regarding retail marijuana industry enforcement and taxation check and serve as the agency's expert for researching and responding to public records requests within statutory deadlines and helping to determine what specific information meets the request and statutory requirements Bam. minimum qualifications well bachelor's degree in com public admin political science or business ad and three years professional experience in communications and or media dang don't have a degree i'm just a high school graduate yeah. Uh, oh, substitutions, a combination of work experience in communications, media, and government, which provided the same kind, amount, and level of knowledge acquired in the relevant education, may be substitute on a year-for-year basis for the bachelor's degree. Well, I've been well, doing this for nine uh, years. I think that I will think substitute. That, uh, yeah, Very covered. nice. Uh, two years of training and teaching experience. That's me. Two years experience working in the media. That's me. <laughs> two years experience in web design. That's me. Uh, it, knowledge of Colorado legislative process, somewhat, yeah. And, and this is just over the last two years when we've been running for 20 yeah. years. Like. Experience developing and implementing a comprehensive communications plan, yeah. yeah. Experience utilizing online tactics, yeah. <laughs> Excellent written and oral communication skills, I hope your, so. Your, your tactic is great. Tactics. So, the only question I have for this is, is there a drug test? <laughs> Probably not, because it's a state government position, right? Yeah, Can no. you imagine? <laughs> I, I, was, I was reading down the bottom. I don't think there's any. Uh, <clears throat> but that's, that's amazing. But this does lead me to where I wanted to go with the idea of, you know, uh, get a job and get off dope. And, and that is that one of the, I believe that one of the pieces of inertia, because like there's a, there's a lot of what keeps marijuana illegal is, is the inertia of that it is illegal. And that a system has been set up and this whole self-fulfilling system of, you know, prisons and rehabs and all this stuff, uh, you know, cops using asset forfeiture, uh, using marijuana laws as an easy way to get uh, uh, people, uh, certain neighborhoods in a database. All these effects are uh, a result of marijuana prohibition. But one that often I don't think gets enough uh, focus is its effect on creating a stratified layer of low wage workers. When you look at drug testing stats and you look at who gets drug tested, it's very rarely anybody in management. It's very rarely white collar positions. It's very rarely high tech or high skill positions. It's a lot of service industry. It's a lot of construction industry. It's a lot of the hard work jobs out there that make America go. And I believe 
that the drug testing that's involved in that keeps and keeping marijuana illegal acts as this handy little way of keeping the low level employees in line. Right. I know for myself in my career, I did a whole bunch of contract work and got paid a whole lot less and didn't have any building for my future because of my status as a marijuana smoker, because my urine would disqualify me from jobs. And I did not feel like I should have to cheat to get a job. Now, meanwhile, a very dear friend of mine, I spoke to a dear, dear friend of mine on Sunday, and she was talking about getting a new job and how she hid a vial of her friend's mom's urine in her vagina so she could go take a drug test to get this job. Good paying job and all. And I just, that's just amazing to me. And you know that anywhere you work, there's someone at the job site wearing a plastic dong with a bag full of urine on their person. At least one. At least one. <laughs> you know that's happening. And, and, and so I think that this drug testing and keeping marijuana illegal keeps this keeps people like me and keeps regular marijuana users from joining that upwardly mobile promotable area of society. And then it gets used against us when they say, Hey, when well, we look at the statistics of marijuana smokers, by God, they don't make as much money. It definitely affects productivity. Well, no, that's a self-selecting bias there, man. If you purposefully keep us out of the jobs that pay us more money, of course we make less money. That's insane. So this is something, you know, this get a job, get off dope is frustrating to me. And the other angle, the other more insidious angle of this is how much it props up American capitalism through the use of slave labor. Yeah, I said it, slave labor. When you're putting people in a prison cell and you're forcing them to work for an American corporation, forcing them to work because remember, even though slavery is illegal in America, it's legal if it's p punishment for a crime. That read your read your constitution <laughs> punishment unless under punishment for a crime involuntary servitude. Now they do them the honor or the grace of paying them pennies on a dollar, you know, 17 cents an hour, 20 cents an hour, whatever the hell it might be sub minimum wage. And then for their living expenses, whatever they have to do, you know, just making a phone call costs five bucks a minute. You have to work a whole week just to make a phone call to your lawyer just to, to be able to protect your rights. That's slave labor. And this marijuana prohibition maintains this ability to round up the usual suspects because of what you can smell, right? What, what baggie they might have had in their pocket and force them to be working for their lives in a second class level of the economy because they have to check that little box that they've been convicted of a drug crime or that's in a background check. Or an employer can go to Google these days and look up at a arrest website and see, you know, the mug shots of who's been arrested. You can type in a name in a nice little search. Employers do it all the time. And Google comes up and says, hey, this kid was busted for dealing weed. And that keeps them in this lower class level. It may, makes sure that the fast food places and the restaurants and all the places that need service workers can pay them $2 an hour and force them to live on tips. Well, folks, this is changing. And that job posting from Colorado is just the tip of the iceberg, folks. I know the laws right now make it legal for employers to fire people, even in Washington and Colorado, even where it's legal. But as time goes on, that's going to become more and more an untenable position. And we will finally get to join our place at the table, at the economic table, as first-class citizens deserving of respect and protection. <laughs> Yay! Respect and protection. Hey, it's 420 here out in the Pacific time zone. Uh, the dream. It's also 420 in Moscow, Russia, but it's 420 a.m. So, have one on us, Vladimir. <laughs> have you <laughs> mellow out. that funny uh, I don't want to cry me no more. <laughs> Putin, Putin needs have to be puffing. <laughs> Putin needs to be puffing, yeah. <laughs> Marijuana for world peace. We'll be right back. He would say to South Carolina, then you know you're talking to that reefer man. I'm Radical Russ Belville, and I want to thank you for listening to 420 Radio. We couldn't survive without you and our sponsors, and I'd like you to check out one of our prime sponsors, the National Cannabis Coalition. I've been working with NCC since June of 2012, and I'm proud to be part of the team they have assembled. 
National Cannabis Coalition is building the partnerships with reformers, lawmakers, and industry we need to be successful. Visit the National Cannabis Coalition website at nationalcannabiscoalition.com or the easier to remember ncc420.com. That's where you'll get the exclusive first look at my radical rants, as well as informative articles from the nation's top cannabis pundits. Visit ncc420.com today, and if you have your phone handy, text Russ to 42420 to support NCC and 420 Radio. It's a free text message that helps us help you end adult marijuana prohibition. Learn more at ncc420.com, and thanks for supporting independent marijuana legalization public radio. I'm a reefer smoking man. Woodpipe Smoke Shop and Speakeasy is your source for cannabis community gear in southern Wisconsin. Owners Brian and Tammy Wood are located in Kendall, just outside of Madison, and they've got everything for the smoking enthusiast, including a full assortment of pipes, water pipes, hookahs, bubblers, one-hitters, and so much more. They're open noon to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and can help you with your detoxification therapies as well. Call 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com for more information. That's 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com. And as always, Go Pack Go! Four Twenty Radio is listener supported marijuana legalization twenty four hour cannabis community radio, and we can't do it without your support. Sign up to become a VIP member of Four Twenty Radio today by visiting Four Twenty Radio org and clicking on the donate button at the top of the screen. You can do a one time donation or become a VIP with a small monthly donation starting at nine ninety nine per month. You can do a direct action to help support marijuana legalization education right here on the internet. Support 420radio.org. You'll be glad you did. Toker Talk Radio. I'm Radical Russ. That's Brian the Red over there. That's music from Revolution that you're hearing. Good guys, Revolution. So, uh, moving on, we were talking a little bit, you know, about that comment by Representative Bill Lant of Missouri's 159th District, whose email is bill.lant at house.mo.gov. Uh, and how he said that a patient who was writing him about uh, marijuana, uh, medical marijuana, should uh, get a job and get off dope. Well, thanks to the immediacy of social networking, I actually ha- have them kind of not on the line, but um, I got a response uh-huh. from uh, Cassie, who is apparently hanging out with Arden, uh, who hit me up on Facebook and said, Russ Belville, Arden and I just watched your live show. We really appreciate you so much for the support in this issue and for saying Arden's name correctly. We love the <laughs> rant. We are still watching now. Thank you again. How else would you pronounce Arden? It's A A R D E N. Arden. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. Arden. Arden. Er- no, sorry. We we can't mispronounce stuff. We work in radio. Oh yeah, yeah. But, um, right. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I've always uh, uh, perfectly pronounced. Everything I've ever said on the radio, sure. precisely, uh-huh. indubitably, because I'm I'm perfect like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let me go on though, because in Arden's email response back and forth here with Representative Bill Lant from Missouri's 159th district, whose email address is bill.lant at house.mo.gov, um, we touched on this idea of how the politicians are just way behind. I mean, this is a guy saying, "Get off dope." It's like, you know, Huggy Bear called. <laughs> he said the word on the streets now is it's not called dope. <laughs> I mean, uh, he said, anyway. give it the times, man. It's a dab, brother. It's a dab, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, way, way out of touch, right? Way out of touch. And so this kind of segues into a column written by Dana Milbank. Uh, this was written yesterday at the Washington Post. 
and it's entitled, How Can Congress Cure Political Ills? Smoke Some Marijuana. Dana Milbank, a respected, serious, you know, inside the Beltway journalist saying that Congress should smoke some marijuana. So I'm like, I'm interested. Let's hmm. let's read more. <laughs> so here I'm we intrigued. go. I'm intrigued. I'm peaked. Let me here, here, let me read more. So here's the opening opening paragraph. Okay. <sighs> Legal marijuana is spreading like a weed across the land, but it has yet to take root in a place where people might benefit most from inhaling the capital. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, I've installed a uh, new uh, engineering software on the Liebermater that causes her to ding anytime there's a pot pun. Oh, yeah. Cool. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the bit. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Anytime there's a pot pun, you will hear the ding noise. All right. Oh, well, I can dig with that. <laughs> <laughs> the Maryland General Assembly finished work Monday on a marijuana decriminalization bill, joining two dozen other states in the district in some form of legalization. Colorado and Washington allow recreational pot, while most others have legalized only medical marijuana. But the combined campaign has redefined the meaning of a grassroots movement. Still, federal law hasn't budged, and a bill sponsored by Representative Earl Blumenauer, a Democrat from Oregon, my congressman, w that would recognize the medical value of marijuana has languished for a year. It has only 23 co-sponsors and no chance of passing. On Monday, when members of the pro-legalization Americans for Safe Access held their annual lobby day on Capitol Hill, not a single member of Congress granted them a personal audience. That's pretty sad. Of course, the Cannabis Corps wasn't agitated about that. It isn't agitated about much of anything. This might have something to do with the fact that many of its users use marijuana. I'm going to give that a, that, we're going to get, that's a pot pun. That's a derain. Anyway, uh, the lobby day briefing scheduled for 11 a.m. was pushed back to noon, at which point the host asked for a further five minute delay. There were no complaints, perhaps because munchies had been provided potato chips and sandwiches, as well as Coca-Cola, and the crinkling of wrappers and crunching of chips could be heard throughout the event. If the pot proponents were any more laid back, they would have been horizontal. In this sense, our perpetually warring lawmakers would have benefited from meeting with the legalization crowd and perhaps trying some free samples. Our ever indignant representatives need urgently to chill out and free their minds. If the benefits the medical marijuana advocates touted on Monday are real, Congress should immediately refer the matter, <laughs> uh, stretching there, Dana, uh, to committee to draft a joint resolution. Oh. Everybody must get stoned. Everybody, everybody must get stoned. Jahan Marku, a PhD who gave the pharmacological portion of Monday's briefing, explained to me the mechanism by which medical marijuana, if consumed by a sufficient number of lawmakers, could cure our political ills. Quote, Cannabis acts upon a system in our body, and that system, the endocannabinoid system, regulates five things, said Marku, who has long sideburns and wore an open-collar purple shirt. It helps us to eat, sleep, relax, forget, and protect. And by the way, that's a soundbite that uh, Dr. Uma was using a lot when I was in uh, Atlanta. She used that like a lot on the, uh, the cable show. Eat, sleep, relax, forget, and protect. Dana Milbank continues. Our leaders don't have much trouble eating, and whether they sleep well and are protected from cancer and other illness is not our concern. But getting them to relax and to forget, this could be most therapeutic. Marcuse said new research indicates that people who use marijuana perform better intellectually than those who drink alcohol or smoke tobacco. This suggests that if House Speaker John Boehner were to switch vices from cigarettes and wine to pot, the body politic might be healthier. Tests show that marijuana makes animals less sensitive to provocation provocations such as a bell ringing if you ring it they get freaked out marku said if you give them a cannabinoid they tend not to get freaked out in addition cannabis might help lawmakers rise above the cycle of constant combat and revenge much the way it helps soldiers overcome post-traumatic stress disorder that's the great one great thing about the endocannabinoid system marku said it's there to help you forget useless information or information that's harmful end quote far out at the briefing, the advocates took pains to demonstrate their professionalism. Most wore business attire, although one man sported a black cap, sunglasses, and a large flower in his lapel, and they spoke about manufacturing processes and growing standards. 
This is an industry that's in the maturation state, said Tim Smale, who runs a marijuana dispensary in Maine. No longer do you see the hippies and the tie-dyes, necessarily speaking. Still, a moment later, he got on his knees and asked a congressional staffer to help the cause. I'm not opposed to begging, he said. Smale, who uses cannabis for his migraines, wants his product to be treated as any other medicinal herb. Mike Lashewski, Americans for Safe Access's policy director, described the increasing array of marijuana tinctures and lotions. There are all kinds of ways to consume medical cannabis without smoking, he said, although smoking actually does remain a very effective delivery system for many patients. And so it could be for chronically dyspeptic lawmakers. Smoking dope won't necessarily stop them from making a hash of things, but it could hardly make things worse. Okay, so on all in all, I'm going to give this like a half thumbs down. He got some good information out here uh, from the people, but... God, the whole first five, six paragraphs is nothing but pot puns. Yep. And, you know, it's this this kind of attitude from, you know, these uh, some of the mainstream journalists and some of the mainstream politicos that is problematic. And and it it's recognized here in the fact that, like they said, Americans for Safe Access didn't get to talk to a single member of Congress on Lobby Day. Not one. And yet, this is an issue where... 70 to 80 percent of americans state by state i can't find one that's much lower support medical marijuana and support broad access to it not just cbd not this no home grow stuff they actually support real whole plant medical marijuana and i'm hard pressed to think of i mean there's a few political uh issues where the public is way on one side the politicians don't respond uh you know universal background checks for guns even among NRA supporters and Republicans and rural voters and such, they support that. Can't get Congress to move on it. You get a, a, a large majority. I, I don't know what the majority is anymore, but I know with respect to our policies on Israel and uh, territories in the West Bank and Palestinian rights and all that kind of stuff, the American people on one side, politicians way on the other. Getting money out of politics. There's raising the minimum wage, having a, you know, some sort of public option health care. These are things which the American people pretty broadly support. But Congress doesn't. You can't ever get around Congress on this. And the reason why, folks, is you got to understand that this country is a country of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's just the problem is corporations are people, my friend. And this is still a country where you have your freedom of speech. But the problem is the corporation's money has been declared speech. And it's just gotten worse this past week with this decision, this uh, McCutcheon decision, that has pretty much opened the floodgates for money in politics to the point where billionaire Sheldon Adelson, who is a casino magnate, made all his money on gambling, right? Where this Sheldon Adelson, this billionaire, basically hosted his own primary Basically had all the Republicans flying to Las Vegas to show, you know, kind of dog and pony show themselves for who should deserve Sheldon Adelson's billions, his money for the, the political race. And, I, you know, I'm picking on Republicans. It's going to happen on the Democratic side, too. <laughs> you have the same kind of thing. It's going to be, you know, uh, uh, Bill Gates or it's going to be, you know, some of these uh, Bezos of Amazon or some of these tech guys, some of the Wall Street people that supported Obama. And so that's why, you know, sometimes I, I talk to people and they can't understand why is there's, how come we can't get it? Oh my God, oh, we can't get it passed. So many people support it. What's going on? Well, it's because people support it, but corporate people don't. Corporate people are threatened by marijuana legalization. All sorts of corporate people. The corporate people who run our prisons are upset about it. The corporate people that make our drugs, the corporate people that brew our beer and sell our cigarettes and all those things and more, the corporate people that run the rehabs, all sorts of corporate people don't like this. And there's all sorts of corporate people that make money off the side of the drug war that don't like it. Those corporate people that run banks that are laundering drug money by the billions and getting slapped on the wrist. HSBC, I'm looking at you. There's all sorts of that going on. The corporate people don't want legalization. And this is why we have to push harder than ever and not rest on our laurels and get legalization at whatever level in as many places as we can, as soon as we can, because the more big money 
continues to evolve and over the Roberts court, uh, you know, consume our politics, the less the voices of us little people are going to matter. And the more we're going to have to hope for billionaires like George Soros and Sperling and the late uh, Peter Lewis and these people to kick in the money. So keep working and keep working hard. And also understand that what we're doing is not is only tangentially about marijuana. This is about freedom. Marijuana happens to be the battlefield. And when we win on this battlefield, there are a whole bunch of other battlefields where freedom needs to be fought for. We're going to take a break. Stick around. We'll be right back. It's simply business. It's simply business. It's simply business. You know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. It's simply business. It's simply business. It's simply business, you know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. It's simply business, you know why they won't let us grow. It's simply business. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. Support the Russ Belleville Show. Text the word Russ to 420-420 and connect with the National Cannabis Coalition. You can also send 10 bucks to the Russ Belleville Show right from your smartphone. That's Russ to 420-420. You're listening to Radical Russ on the Russ Belleville Show. Four Twenty Radio, your ticket to the High Times Cannabis Cups. There was one question that was voted on that, that ranked fairly high, uh, and that was whether legalizing marijuana would improve uh, the economy and job creation. And. Uh, uh, I don't know what this says about the online audience, but...
Welcome back. 41 after the hour. That's Sacred Reich with Sweet Leaf covering Black Sabbath, of course. And uh, this is the kind of music you'll hear on the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour every Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Two hours of metal, mayhem, and marijuana with me and Herb Thrasher. Last week, we had Zaraxagil in the studio, the three-man band who won Portland's Winter Metal Olympics or Metal Winter Olympics. Uh, I forget which way it is. Anyway, they won. And they were in here, and we were playing their music and talking to them, having a real good time. And uh, I was uh, corresponding with Herb today. He was telling me about another band. He looks like he's going to be getting in here into the studio named Mach 22. Looking forward to finding out more about them. So, uh, phone lines are open at 971-533-7111 if you have any comments, questions, or things to talk about. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk about this. There's an article up at NewJersey.com, NJ.com, written by Joan Quigley. And Joan Quigley is a former state assemblywoman from Jersey City and is currently the president and CEO of the North Hudson Community Action Corp in Union City. And I love this article. Uh, It's entitled, If Marijuana Laws Change, Do Convicts Get a Break? And she says, across the country, state legislators are considering decriminalizing possession of marijuana for personal recreational use. Some users are delighted, of course, and some anti-weed activists are horrified. Some people object on religious grounds or health concerns. Some think all of the things that could be done if the sale of cannabis was taxed. And about 40,000 prison inmates are asking, what about me? Those are the men and women convicted of crimes involving marijuana and sentenced to terms ranging from a few months to life. They're not part of the conversation yet, but eventually they'll have to be. And uh, it's a great article. She talks about what's going on in New Jersey and then goes on to point out in New Jersey, possession of 50 grams or less is considered a misdemeanor with convicted persons liable to spend up to six months in jail and paying as much as a one as, as much as $1,000 in fines. Most important conviction brings a permanent criminal record. There are stiffer penalties for possession of larger amounts or intent to distribute or use within a school zone or use during commission of another crime and so on. Penalties for felony use of marijuana vary by state with multiple convictions subjecting convicts to lifelong sentences in prison and others for shorter terms, but a future of being barred from some employment as repeat drug offenders. I don't know how many people in New Jersey prisons for are in New Jersey prisons for marijuana offenses, but I can't help wondering what their status would be if marijuana laws were changed. In America, there is no guarantee of what lawyers call retroactive ameliorative relief in sentencing. In other words, if it was a crime when you did it, it's always going to be a crime on your record. Although you can't be punished for something that was not a crime at the time you did it. So if something ceases to be a crime, should a convict get a break? There will never be a time when rape, robbery, or murder isn't a crime, but shifts in public opinion cause legal shifts, cause legal shifts. Soon it'll be illegal to smoke an ordinary cigarette on a public beach, and it's already illegal to whack your pesky youngster on the behind. Two things an older generation took for granted. Now, I'm certainly not suggesting we jail folks for doing those things, but I have to wonder whether we should keep on punishing people for actions that were illegal once but everyone may just take for granted tomorrow. That's a good point. You know, lots and lots of people. I mean, the, the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate uh, irony of all of this is the fact that Eddie Lepp, convicted of growing, you know, thousands of medical marijuana plants, is currently serving time, his the rest of his time in a Colorado prison, <laughs> in a federal uh-huh. prison in Colorado. So he's got to be in a legal state. <laughs> Serving time for a a medical marijuana conviction. It's just insane. And we're going to have to think about this. And and, and how is this going to be done? I mean, most of the people I talk to in the reform movement who talk about retroactive ameliorative sentencing relief uh, talk about it in the frame of ameliorating the marijuana crime. But if they were doing something else as well, right, if it was, you know, if if they had a a violent crime conviction and they had weed on them. Well, no, they still got to stay in for the violent crime, of course. Right. So we're only talking about, you know, nonviolent possession, distribution, trafficking, growing, uh, crimes, quotes, crimes, crimes. Right. And of course, I think that 
those people should be released. This is something that's been a, a hallmark of the various iterations of the Jack Herrer initiative is the, is the release and expungement of the records of people previously uh, convicted on marijuana crimes. I fully support that. And it's interesting to me that it's politically hard to do, but there it is. It's politically really tough to do. Now, uh, part of it, of course, is again, going back to those corporate people, these people that run the prisons, these people that get their labor off of prison inmates. You know, if you're going to sentence people to prison and force them to work for you for like 37 cents an hour, you want potheads. We'll show up. We'll do the work. We'll be good at it. The, uh, the guys on meth, the murderers, the arsonists, maybe not so reliable as workers, <laughs> right? We make good slave labor. So the idea of making marijuana legal and stopping the future flow of slave labor is tough enough. But then to ask these corporate people to embrace the idea of losing their current slave labor. Remember last time America tried doing that around 1860. <laughs> it was not, didn't turn out. It was kind of a bloody mess. I'll tell you. And that's the kind of feeling these, these prison industries and these rehab industries and these cops that are living off asset forfeiture, that's the feeling they're going to have. And they're going to fight tooth and nail to protect that kind of stuff. So we've got to expose it. We've got to force them to defend why they're continuing to keep marijuana prisoners locked up. In Colorado, this should be a major, and in Washington too, this should be a major PR campaign. You know, when I was working for normal, sometimes people would say, well, you know, once marijuana is legalized, you know, normal doesn't want to legalize it because once it's legalized, they'll be out of a job. <laughs> right. You know, like the NAACP doesn't want racism eliminated because then they'd be out of a job. Greenpeace doesn't want whaling to stop because then they'd be out of a job. <laughs> people who fight against child abuse don't want it to stop because then they'd be out of a job. It's stupid. <laughs> but it does illustrate the fact that when marijuana becomes legalized, Activists have to change their focus a bit. And I think this is one place there should get a lot of focus. Helping these guys that are the, the pot POWs. Uh -huh. It's like, all right, now we ended the war. Now let's get our POWs back. And, and the war isn't truly ended. I know that. It's only an ounce. It's only three plants. Blah, blah, blah. Taxes are too high. I know, I know, I know. Uh -huh. But still, <laughs> right? We're, we're not criminals anymore in Colorado. So they shouldn't be in jail anymore in Colorado. And substitute Washington for this same thing. Although, although maybe not the same thing, since Washington hasn't legalized home cultivation, perhaps there's not as good as argument for letting out the cultivators who have been sentenced. Just to be logically consistent. I think they should be released, of course, but I'm just saying logically consistent. At least in Colorado, you can say, look, if you busted a guy who had six plants or less and he's doing time, you ought to let him out. But then you get into that tricky area of, well, what if the guy was busted growing 40 plants? Or 400 plants, right? That would be still illegal in Colorado, unless you're, you know, one of these tiers of growers or whatever. So uh, what, are the, what do we do with them, right? Possession of an ounce is legal in Colorado. What do we do with the guy who got caught with a quarter pound? See, this is where it becomes politically difficult, right? I guess, logically, consistently speaking, you could say anybody caught with an ounce or less, anybody caught with six plants or less, should have their records expunged and should be released and not have to be on probation and anything like that. But then now you're going to, you're going to have to keep the guys that were caught with a quarter pound or 12 plants. And then, then it, then it gets, you know, as an activist, how you, you, that's a tough, that's a tough thing to have to like agree to as a compromise, right? Uh -huh. Well, all right, we'll just get some of the POWs back. But you know, if you're talking logical consistency, it might be something we have to look at at least and consider. These are some things to think about, but we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll wrap up the show in our last 10 minutes. Also, get you ready for the next episodes coming up. Weed Nerd is next with Sub Cool. And then tonight, Thursday, or Tuesday night, excuse me, but today is Tuesday. Tuesday night, tonight, 8 p.m., another, a new live episode of Thrasher Sports. We'll go over the NCAA tourney and more. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into 
the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Are you or is someone you know a marijuana smoker? Have you or is someone in your family been arrested for a marijuana violation? You need to know the truth about pot. Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, is the most comprehensive source of information regarding marijuana and its effects on health as well as legal issues. Normal even offers a database of lawyers specializing in cannabis in your area. Normal, the nation's largest and most successful marijuana law reform organization, has spent decades gathering the knowledge and science on everything related to cannabis. Normal is the best resource to find out the truth about marijuana, connect with a lawyer in your area, or help find an end to prohibition. Information is available at normal.org, that's N-O-R-M-L dot org, or toll free at 888-67-NORMAL. Green Stream Radio from Olympia, Washington, with Grandma Cat on one and Tim Me every Thursday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. GMT, right here on 420radio.org. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place. Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook rolls all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history. Profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. Everyone knows marijuana is dangerous and medical pot is really strong. That's why it's so hard in California to get your weed card unless something's really wrong. Visit to my doctor. It's a long shot, but I gotta try. He hands me a list of all the ailments I can have to qualify. Can't believe what I am reading. This is just what I've been needing. A government supply to get legally high. Weed card. It's what I need. Hardly ever okay. Always. But it's not an addiction. Cause my doctor gave me a prescription. Bad dreams or anxiety, propensity for drugs or alcohol, anorexia or obesity, too bad, too thin, either way you win. Carpal tunnel syndrome, color blindness, and stuttering, tooth decay, fatigue, depression, motion sickness, impotence, or TMJ. You can smoke to quit cigarettes for asthma or your motherfucking Tourette's. It's a dream come true. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. I can't do. Weed card, like, it's what I need. It's so great. Hardly when they ever okay. Me. It's just Always. The cutest little girl but it's not an addiction, oh, yeah. because yeah. my doctor gave me a prescription. I, I think that. Break it down now. Songs. Got back pain, need Mary Jane. Can't of, handle uh, this. Eat cannabis. Uh, gotta stomach ache, gotta awaken the flowers, Have an injury, need no. THC. Black, get black. fucked up for your hyperhidrosis, or just sweaty palms in case you need a diagnosis. It's not a crime. It's for 20 times. We card. It's what I need. Hardly ever okay. Always. But it's not an addiction. Cause my doctor gave me a prescription. There you go. That's uh, one of my favorite group names ever, Garfunkel and Oates. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Garfunkel it's, and Oates it's, with it's Weed the, Card. It's the daughters of those uh, those artists. No. Yes. Really? Damn right. No, I thought it was just an ironic no. punny nickname. I got to look that up. That's amazing. They, they played at Hemp uh, Stock a couple of years ago. Wow. John Oates. Mind blown. And Art Gun Garfunkel's daughters. Wow, mind blown. I thought it was just a funny name. I, that, I mean, from what I understand, that's who, that's I will who check they are. Out. All right. Well, anyway, before we go, <laughs> just wanted, after mind blown, before just we wanted go. to mention, I, I got a piece, you know, I, I've been writing for High Times for quite a bit now since August and uh, 
today, you know, lately I've been trying to write things that are more like whimsical. Like, because I have to write so many things that are about busts and laws and just, uh, just you know, you want to write something fun and happy sometimes. So I wrote this piece called Seven Habits of Highly Effective Stoners. <laughs> and, uh, you know, cheating off the Stephen Covey thing, right? Yeah. So um, here's the seven habits. Just I'll just break it down. Number one, never lose another lighter. How can you make a habit to never lose another lighter? Well, one method is to simply attach it to you <laughs> with a retractable cord. Uh, this one's called lighter leash, but there's lots of them, and they hold a standard side BIC. Another method is to get yourself a Zippo or some other lighter that's special, you know, fancy. This is a lighter mate, and uh, this is awesome. It's refillable. Uh, piezo sparker, windshield. Yeah. Uh, and, and someone's less likely to slip that into their pocket and, and miss or think it's yeah, theirs. Yeah, think it's theirs. It's different. Yeah. Number two, never lock yourself out of your car or house again. And the way you do this is you build a habit that you cannot lock a door unless you're touching your keys. Now, you can do this with like old-fashioned doors and cars and stuff because you can use the key to lock the car. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first way. I, I got sick of locking myself out of my own car so I made it so I would never lock the car with the, the push down thing to lock the car uh, that yes. I had to be outside the car locking lock it with it. the key to lock it right that was one way now we got so many of these electronic doors that open with a push button that just make the habit that you're touching your keys before you lock a door and I've got this so ingrained that when you'll see me if you see me at events or something and I'm walking out somewhere I will like be patting mm -hmm. my pocket to feel my keys before I walk out <laughs> number three make your stash last longer put it in separate containers if you got one big jar of weed, your mind thinks, oh, I got a lot of weed, and you'll smoke it. <laughs> but you got a whole bunch of little jars of weed in different places, yeah. then you'll smoke less of it because you'll see you're running out. And occasionally you get the little bonus of forgetting where you left one. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's <laughs> you always fun. You find it in a... This yeah. is only for home use, though. Don't do this on the road. That's called intent to distribute if uh, it's yes. in separate containers. <laughs> yes. Number four, remembering people's names. Come up with a nickname, song, movie, or character to remind you of that person, then attach that to a place. For example, if I meet someone, Maria, I start humming that song from West Side Story. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. And then I think about Brooklyn. Because the way our brains evolved as hunter-gatherers, our brains evolved memory, place memory really well to help us, you know, find things. All the guys that win the memory championships have this technique where they map things in their head, like those, like their own house. Like they'll remember a person next to the fireplace and then a, another person next to the kitchen. It really works. Avoid getting busted in your car. Two words, cruise control. Number six, avoid getting busted outside. Figure out which way the wind is blowing and go that way. And stay in open places where you can see what's around you rather than rounding a corner and bouncing into a cop. <laughs> And number seven, avoid getting busted at hotels. Shower cap around the, the, the smoke detector. Smoke in the bathroom. Turn the shower on as hot as it'll go. The steam helps, the, helps to get the smoke out of the vent. Don't open the window. It often leads air inside, and the pressure sends the smoke into the hall. That's all the time we got for Brian the Red. I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seat, you manage, you grow it, you're trying, you're rolling, you're smoking. You take a seat, you manage, you grow it, you're trying.